Now it's time to move towards loops. Now see, whenever you want to repeat certain things, you can do that with the help of loop. Yes, you can do that using functions. You can define a function. You can call the function more time. But let's say if you have a code ready and then a particular code need to run multiple times, maybe for iteration, uh, maybe if you want to run it for 10 times or 20 times, or maybe you have a collection of values and you want to iterate between the values. Maybe you got a file and you want to read the characters of the file one by one. Or maybe you are downloading something from the internet bit by bit. How will you do those things? And this is where you have to repeat the statements. And you can do that with the help of loops. We got multiple options in other languages as well. So the common one are while, do while, and for. In Python, while works. Do while will check. And for loop works. Okay. So let's start with the while loop. So I'm going to close all the other windows because we have talked about this stuff. And now it's time to create a new file. And I'm going to say this is while demo.py. And in this, let's start coding. So what we're trying to do here is, uh, let's say we have a statement and this can be multiple statement, not just one. And I forgot to do one thing. I need to keep my copilot on snooze for some time. And here, let's try to print, let's say, hello world. Now, if you want to print this multiple times, how will you do it? It's very simple. You can write this statement. I can just copy and paste it here. And I can do that two times. Let's say if I want to do 10 times, then I have to type the same statement 10 times. What if I want to do that 1 billion times? I can do it. I am that strong and that consistent. But, you know, it will take a lot of years to do that. Uh, but I don't want to waste my years doing that. So what I will do is, instead of typing it, I will just ask Python, hey, can you repeat this thing multiple times? Python will say, okay, I will do it. So tell me till when you want to do it. So you can say, while it is true, because while is a keyword, which is a loop basically, which checks for the condition. And whenever it sees the condition is true, it will execute the block. Okay, here we just have one statement. You can have multiple statements. It will execute all the statement inside the while loop. And now if you want to check if this is working or not, I will just say Python while underscore demo dot py. And if I say enter, it is printing hello world multiple times and it is not stopping. Okay, it is printing continuously. I don't know if you can eyes can see this. There is a blinking on the right hand side and also blinking here. It is continuously printing hello world. And if I if I want to show you my task manager, it's consuming a lot of power. So this one this amount of power for the while loop example, if I uh, show you by stopping it. Just remember, 30 is the consistent one, right? Or 27, 30. But if I close this, look at the amount of CPU now it is consuming. Okay, so it was continuously doing it using the CPU power. And that's why there are certain bugs in the application because of which entire system, it, it hangs, by the way, uh, your application, which you're using. And then uh, it is basically consuming a lot of your CPU power. This is one of the problem for that. So true is not a good option. We can say false, but then it will not execute anything. So what we should do here. So what we can do is we can put a condition by saying, okay, uh, let's say I want to do this for five times. And if I want to do this, do it for five times, you need a counter. One, two, three, four, five. And to run the counter, we need a variable. Now you can use any variable name, but in programming, basically when you need a counter, you go with I, J, K, all these variable names. Any variable name works, but this are famous one. So let, let's say I'm counting from one. So I'll start from one. Okay, one time hello world, two time hello world, three time hello world. And the do you can check the condition here. So you can say if I is less than equal to five. So if the value of I is less than five, print it. So that means somewhere, we have to change the value of i. If you don't do this, let me just run this once again. It will still go in that loop. Uh, continuously it is printing it. There's no stopping for it. So we have to mention that, hey, you know, I have defined i is equal to 1. That's the initial value. And I'm checking for the condition as well. But somewhere we have to increment it. And that should be a part of a while loop itself. Inside you have to do it. So every time you print hello world, you can say, okay, let me increment the value of i by 1. Now when you do this, let's run this. And uh, yeah, you can see we got hello world five times. Now before we run this step by step, because I want, I know you want to see what's happening, you know, how it is running. And we have seen debugging mode before. But before I do that, outside the while loop, let's say I'm going to print uh, the value of i. Now you have to guess 
what is the value of i whenever you see the space to write this or maybe in your mind what is the value of i now if you're thinking the value of i would be five because that's still that's where we are going right this increment will work till five but if you run this you will get six that's weird right it should be five and to understand this let's do the debugging and if you're if you, if you are thinking six good job Good job, you're there. So let me just add a breakpoint here and let's do this debugging here. So I will just run a Python debugger and it is it is there. Now, if you can see the value of i is one, here also it is one. If I step over, it will print hello world. Look at the console, it's empty at, at this point. I'll just move this code a bit up so that you can see that properly. And if I run this, it will print hello world once. And now it will increment the value of i, it becomes two. It will check if two is less than five, yes. It will go inside, it will print hello void, it will make the value of i as three. It will go up, it will check, okay, three is less than five, yes, it will go inside, it will print hello world, it will increment the value of i to four. Four is less than five, yes, it will print hello world, it will go, it will say, okay, i plus equal to one, increment the value of i to five, and then i is five now. Is five less than five? No, but we have also mentioned equal to here. So five is equal to five, and it will go inside, it will print hello world, so five times hello world printed, and it will increment the value of i, okay? i became six. And then it will check, okay, six is less than or equal to five, no, false. This is where while loop says, okay, my job is done, I got false, I can go home now, and then it will jump out of the loop and it will print the value of i, which is six. That simple, okay? That's how basically your while loop works. Now let's try to work with nested loop. We have done that nested part in if, can we do it here? But for that, I need a good example, okay? So let's say I want to print this thing on the screen. I want to print Telisco, okay? So instead of printing hello world here, it should be Telisco. And I also want to print rocks. Okay, something like this. Telisco rocks, not once. Okay, Telisco rocks, I want to print multiple times. Uh, here I'm saying two. Let's say if I want to print four times, then it, it's easy, right? You can just write this four times. But what if I want to do that 10 times? Then I have to write that 10 times. What if I want to print rocks 100 times? Not a good idea, right? Not printing 100 times there. So since you want to do certain things multiple times, can you do it? So how do we do it? Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to print Telisco and rocks in a different line. So I'm going to pick up this. In fact, first of all, let's run this to see, are we even getting Telisco rocks multiple times? Yeah, we are getting this multiple times. But as I mentioned, I want to make this as dynamic. This is static at, at this point. It will only print two times. What if I want to do that four times, 10 times? So what I can do is I can just take this out from here and also cut and let me print it down somewhere. We'll go step by step. And let's paste it here. And now let's try to run. Let's see what happens. Uh, okay, clear spring is wrong. And now if I run this, okay, you can see it is printing the disco. It is printing rocks, rocks on the new line. Uh, but I don't want rocks, rocks on the new line. Uh, what you can do is see by default when you talk about print, when you click on print here to see the definition of print, and let's see what print is doing here. So if you click on print, print has something called end okay so by default there's a there's one of the parameter of print which is end and by default the value is slash n okay remember this by default value for end is slash n which means even if you don't mention that of course you can mention that if you want but by default it is end and if i say here comma so by default there's a there's a parameter which is passing which is end and by default it is slash n and that's why it is printing on new line and it is, it's here also, even if you don't mention that. It's like a John Cena, it's there, even if you don't mention. So what if I, I change that slash n with a blank thing? The moment you do that, it will change its ending. After printing, it will stay on the same line. So after printing the disco, it will stay on the same line. It will not go on new line. Okay, so we have solved one problem. Next, I don't want to print rocks two times. I want to print rocks only once here so if it will print only once but now i want to print rocks five times so i want to repeat this particular statement five times so what you can do is you can write while here while okay but now i can't use i i have to use another variable and now you can guess it so we can use i j k and again you can use any variable but normally for loops it is easier to read also so let's use j and j less than equal to, now how many times I want to print? I want to print four times. So let's stick to four and give a colon. And this should be a part of it inside. Okay, so this print, which is rocks, is a part of inner while loop. 
this statistical printing is a, is a part of outer while loop. So we can say outer loop, inner loop for our simplicity. And it is giving some warning here. It says J is not defined. Okay, no problem. I will just define it here. So I will say J is equal to one problem solved. And now let's try if this works. I will just run this and something went wrong. Something went wrong. It is not stopping. You know why it's not stopping? It's because we are checking the condition for i and then we are also incrementing it, right? So somewhere it will, it will increment, it will change the value of i. For j, nowhere we are changing the value. So we missed that. So we'll say j plus equal to 1. Now it is incrementing. So it should not give the issue which it was giving before. It worked, but not in a way we wanted. So what went wrong here? For this telescope, it is printing rocks and then this rocks a new line. Okay, new line. That's the issue, is it? Let's solve it. So I will say blank. Uh, just to maintain the uniformity, I will just give a space here. No compulsion, but looks good. And now if you run this, okay, so things are working. You can see it says Telisco, rocks, 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 and then Telisco, Telisco, Telisco. You know, after every Telisco, like this, it should be on the new line. Uh, okay, we'll solve that. So how do we do it? So before you go for printing the next Telisco here, after this, I will just print a blank thing so that it will come on the new line, right? So before you print the next Telisco, right, I want to come on the new line. That's what I wanted here. Let's run this. Okay, this problem is solved. So we got Telisco on new lines. That's one thing we wanted to do. And we wanted to print that five times. One, two, three, four, five. This is perfect. Rocks four times, but it is only doing for one Telisco what they have done wrong. Now let's understand what is happening here by debugging. So we'll just add a debugger here and let's do the debugging. Okay, let's go step by step. The value of i is one, j is one. Perfect. Let's go to the next one. It is it, it it's going to print Telisco and that's it's done here. In fact, let me just scroll up a bit so that I can pull that there. I should have cleared the things before doing it. But anyway, you can check that. So it is printing the disco. Perfect. And if I go to here, it is checking the J value is 1. And then it is checking 1 is less than 4. Yes. It's going to print rocks. And you can see that on the screen on the same line. Because we are not saying next, next line. Then it will go next. It will iterate to the same loop. Because first it will complete the inner loop. Then it will go for the outer loop. So it will check if J is 2. Yes. 2 is less than 4. Yes. It will print rock and rocks that came j value become 3, true, print rocks, j value become 4, still true, rocks, and j value become became 5 now, and it will say false, it will it is not going to print rocks, it will come out of the inner while loop, which is this one, and now it will jump outside, and it will increment the value of i, which was 1, now the i will become 2, because of course you have to print telescope as well, right? That's the outer loop part. Then it will come on new line because we want, before you go for the telescope printing, you have to come on new line. And you can see that cursor went down. And now the value of i is 2. It will print the telescope. It will go on the while loop, the inner while loop. But that's the problem. The value of j is 5. It will not go inside the inner loop. And that's why it's not printing rocks, rocks, rocks. It will simply print, keep printing the disco because the j value is 5. So this declaration which we did outside for j, it should be inside the, the while loop. So that every time you print the disco, you get a new value for j. Okay. And this should work now. Let me just stop this and run it normally, but not from here. I'll switch to my PowerShell. Clear this and let's run this. And you can say it is working. Where to assign the value, where to increment, that is important. So remember, this is the inner loop. And this is a declaration for that. This is a loop and this is a declaration for that. That's how basically your while loop works. Now, if you're thinking, okay, why we are resetting the value of J again? Again, we have talked about it. But in case if you're confused, let's take an example of days and hours. So every hour you, ch you change your timing, right? So if this is, let's say, 5 p.m., then it becomes 6 p.m., 7 p.m., 8 p.m. But if you start from the morning for the particular day, so let's say today is date first, and then you're starting from zero, 0th hour, then 1 hour, 2 hour. Day is not changing. Day is still 1. And then once you complete the entire cycle of hours, once it reaches to 23rd hour, and then it goes to the 0th hour again, the day changes. But the time will reset. Again, it will start from 0. Next day, again, it will start from 0. That's what is happening here. So every time your hours complete the cycle, the day changes and hour get reset. If that makes sense. Uh, so that's how you basically use the nested while loop. See you in the next part. <laughs>